Hi. We're all together. We How does it, okay, you guys are starting off promoting this, this movie and you guys have been working together. When did you wrap the filming of this, of this movie? About how long December. ago? December. Yeah. yeah. All right, and what, just describe, the chemistry among this group Non-existent. Is, we don't like so each other, awkward. really. Uh, <laughs> well, no, did it happen like that on the first film? Y'all just clicked? I think it's Catherine? a sort of prerequisite we didn't yeah. realize that, that David had when he was casting us all. He had the long game vision that yeah. we were all going to be working together for a long time and that it was crucial that we had a kind of inherent chemistry. Um, and I think we sort of just happily discovered it as we went along. And, Ezra. And it's true. There's what something Ezra? about Ezra. I don't know. <laughs> what is it about Ezra? Well, you know that we saw each other yesterday. Yes. We Ooh. did see each other. Where okay. were we? Where Set were it we? up. Set you it don't up. Where, I Come don't. On. don't. Where were don't we? play these games Where with me. We? we were on an airplane <laughs> coming from Atlanta. Oh. And you said, in a very funny way, you said to me um, and the people who I was with, you said, Enjoy yourselves, kids. Party on. <laughs> As you walked past wait, us wait, in the airplane, wait. and I was like, cool, see you tomorrow. Well, because, well, that, that's, because, <laughs> that's because you were in first class and we were in coach. I walked right past uh, you. Uh, <laughs> you know, yeah. Yeah. We all lose sometimes. But speaking of that, you guys, fans must come up to you. What kind of questions do you get asked when someone stops you on the street, Allison? What's the first thing that, that you get Which asked? Which way is Houston? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Uh, There's just a map shown yeah. in face. And yeah. where is it? Yeah, I, I don't actually get recognized. You don't? You don't? Wow. Oh. Da like, almost never. Yeah, same. Yeah, thing. unless someone's like, What's I think it? I know you. I think maybe do you know my cousin? Yeah, yeah. Or, Did we go to you know, high school like, again? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I really do. Joe, you know. used to have those days when people didn't yeah, do you know. Do you vaguely who you were. remember what that Do you was remember that? that? I do remember. No, wait, I can still fly under the radar. The good thing about being a woman is you can change your appearance. Yeah. You don't have to. Can I, I also um, think accents, you know, it, probably when you open your mouth, people, they're suspecting something and then it's confirmed. Exactly. And when I'm in, when I'm in Europe and I'm in the UK, it's when I speak that then that people feel a little more confident. Yeah. I, I remember I was yeah. watching that interview with you and Oprah and you were talking about, it was a while back, but you were talking about how there was a time, because you choose kind of a solitary profession, you like to work in your space, and then all of a sudden you step out and the bright lights are there. And yeah. the person who would rather, it seems like, likes her privacy and almost seems shy suddenly is cast out into this crazy <laughs> it world. Was a, it was an adjustment. Yeah? Yeah, it was a huge adjustment. Mm -hmm. I'm is, much more com com comfortable with it now. You know, part of it is I, I always love meeting readers and fans. I yeah. genuinely do. Um, but y when, you, when you set out to write a children's book, you do not imagine some things that have happened to me since. That's yeah. not a typical trajectory, no. Yeah. Um, Dan. Um, hey. Dan. <laughs> you. Um, when Joe steps out onto a set, it yes. must be something for the actors. I mean, first of all, it's... It, they're annoyed by are, me, are, actually, aren't you? How would I'm you describe that? Lies. Not at all. That's exactly <laughs> how it is. You did a great job. Did you like... What, what do you do? Uh, do you like... Oh, she's do you yeah. fanboy? Oh, what do you do? Yeah. Here we go well, again. You know, it's been... <laughs> The very first time I met her, this is crazy t talking at the back of her head like that. <laughs> <laughs> the very first time I met her um, was like re rehearsals for the first movie and, and uh, yeah, I mean it's like she's, she's like, she's a rock star, you know, and uh, so, I mean, I, she, she, but she is so down to earth. What do you remember about the first meeting? I remember that there was, she was standing there and she had a script, a manuscript uh, next to her that was as tall as she was, <laughs> and I said, um, and you can you can verify this, but I, I said, uh, do I have to memorize all that? <laughs> and, then, and then she said, uh, she said, oh no no, this is everything. And how I interpreted that was, mm -hmm. that was all five movies, or that was it was a lot. That was a lot. It wasn't all everything. It wasn't right. all it was like everything. Makes it sound like you carry around this, <laughs> yeah. you know, radioactive object. Yeah, that's the book of everything. Yeah, yeah. The book of everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it was a lot of notes. It was yeah. a lot of backstory. And, and yeah. right away, I was just like, okay. And I just started imagining that she has extra, like you know how Einstein has extra folds in his brain for <laughs> ma math. Yeah. Yeah. Like the right side of her brain is just like extra Babe. folds of creativity. You know, just like. There yeah. must be. It's like an endless supply. Are you guys amazed? Yeah. What's yes. the deal with yeah. like the autopsy and stuff? Once you know. You're gonna get the look in there. That's Don't so grim. <laughs> you want me to give you my brain? Brain. <laughs> brain? was pretty small. It turned out. So it's just... Look, Warner Brothers love you. You could probably you? ask. I'd love to turn your skull into a microphone. I want her brain. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, 
actually, that's right on brand because right. we have a skull in the movie. Well, that is, trust me, I try to stay there. I love Can that. We, <laughs> that's <laughs> good. Just yeah. straight in there. By the time people see this, they're going to have seen the trailer. Right. So could you help us illustrate with words what the big reveals are that people are going to know before they go see the movie? Who would like to take it? Don't this is so it. scary to answer that I feel like we can only leave it to one woman to oh. say these words. Okay. Joe? So um, there are, there's um, a big reveal that we definitely shouldn't reveal because mm -hmm. it's not in the trailer. But I think the thing that will probably excite fans most is that you see um, Claudia Kim's character and hear that character named. If you are a huge oh, Harry Potter fan mm -hmm. and you want to, are you going to delight Harry Potter fans with little secrets and little eggs that you've placed um, for them? Oh yeah. What do you think? <laughs> yes, I think so. Yes, I, I think so. I think. I hope so. I want you to look at Ezra's face. <laughs> Just look at it. <laughs> Yeah, well, <laughs> is Ezra the biggest Harry Potter fan of the group? Not yeah. really fair, though. It's not no? really fair. Ivana Lynch. Ivana yeah. is a, is, yeah, she's, and she's also, a super fan. It's just That's that true. Ezra has a certain sort of extraordinary brain of his own, and it, um, it does retain an, a lot of information. Oh, yeah. yeah. But we're all, you know, he's gotten a rap for yeah. being the the primo fan and People I feel it's a, we're a little short changed here. No, I think everybody, I know if you Google it, it's Ezra. Yeah. The biggest Harry yeah. Potter fan, it's Ezra. The one who knows most of the trivia, but it is. it's Ezra. Well, he, he's got a good brain for trivia. Some people need untimed testing, you know, yeah. there's lots of different <laughs> kinds of brains out there. I'm just saying. It's also just like, you know, I had a relationship to this material as a child that was like, it was my Bible and security blanket, you know. Oh, that's so, so, that's so nice. Jill, when you hear, I mean, you hear it from Ezra, and I'm sure you've heard it from fans forever, that this is, you are their childhood in some ways. You really defined how they grew up. It's, an, it's a privilege. It's the most beautiful thing to hear. It really is. Particularly, as Ezra says, comfort blanket. I know the books were a refuge for people mm -hmm. who were going through certain things. Mm -hmm. The books are, you know, they're full of themes of loss, lost love, protective nature of love, safety, um, complex moral choices, what makes a good person. So I, you know, I, I think I wrote something that I needed as much as I wanted to write. I mean, when I think about the beginning for you and when you started to put pen to paper and when this all came to be, I was thinking there are so many women who have been in a situation like that where you're on your knees, like mm -hmm. you have nothing. Mm -hmm. You've got a child to care for, a dream in your head, and practical responsibilities. Mm -hmm. The idea that you somehow rose out of the ashes is still astonishing to me. Like when you think about that time in your life, um, you know what what kind of goes through you? I think if you've been through a period like that, it never leaves you. Not in a not in a traumatic sense, but that is my touchstone. That period in my life is my touchstone. And for all that it was really tough, I always th feel privileged. I kn I knew who my real friends were. Hmm. You know, they were there for me then, and yeah. that is a gift. So, you know, the, the crazy thing that happened to me subsequently um, was sometimes scary, but I always had that fact. I had certain, a, a kind of bedrock there of real friendships and relationships that, that had lasted through very tough times. So there was, there was a lot to be thankful for. And I always say I was very lucky because my dream just involved literally a pen and paper. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not like I was trying to build a business or yeah. I, could, I could create, you can create in that way anywhere. Did you think on rejection 10, 11, 12, you poured your soul into this mm -hmm. thing and still people said no. Sure. Was there a point where you just said to yourself, you know what, I, I, I just, maybe I made a wrong choice. Maybe all those naysayers were right. I think if, I think if every publisher had turned me down, I, I would have got there, but I, was, I really believed in the book. I did. And you know, it sounds crazy, but I went, <laughs> Well, and I got my first rejection letter. I was quite proud of it. Why? <laughs> because Why? I thought oh, real writers get rejected. That was that was you know, right. That was my. Yeah. I didn't. Th I never expected the first publisher to take the book. I thought this is great. I pinned it on my wall. There, that's a sign yeah. I'm a writer. <laughs> I've been rejected. That's true. Well, my rejection letters were on my kitchen notice board. How old was your daughter Jessica at that time? Uh, when when the first book was taken, she was four. Yeah, when I, when I got my first publishing deal, she was just four. So she can remember a time before, you know, everything went crazy. If you yeah. were to describe just for a minute that window of time, and I know it's, it, again, it's your touchstone, but how would you describe kind of the most difficult period for you? Um, I think that, you know, 
poverty is, is, is tough. It's just tough. And I, do, I don't like to hear poverty romanticized, ever. It, it grinds you down. It's really, really tough. And there are, I can remember, you know, just some, just some very hard times. I feel enormous empathy for anyone who's still in that situation. But, you, you know, it's, um, I still have a lot of love in my life. Mm. So I look back and I still see a lot of hope and happiness there. You talked about how your mom's life and passing appeared in pages in the Harry Potter books somehow. Mm all those emotions. Sure. Um, do you still, how often do you think about her now at this point in your oh, life? Constantly. Huh. I mean, but in a, in a positive way, I think the last time I got quite teary about my mother's passing was I, I was given an honor at Buckingham Palace. Oh my God, if my mother had known. <laughs> yeah, it's, you know, it's a moment like that you think, oh, what would she have said? And that, I, I, did, I was quite teary about that. When yeah. do you think your mom would have been the proudest well, of you? Palace. <laughs> to that, be honest, you think that? <laughs> my mother was a traditionalist. If I had taken her to Buckingham Palace, that would have been, yeah, the ultimate. But she was a huge reader. Oh, she was? So, yeah. So it wasn't just that I was successful at something, which, of course, she was going to be incredibly proud of whatever I'd done. But it, it's, it's sad to me she never got to read the books. But life is weird because the books wouldn't be what they are if she hadn't yeah. asked on. So it's a bittersweet situation. Did she know about just even the idea? No, she oh, didn't. she did? No. Did you have the idea? Yeah, I was? did. I, I was working on it for six months before she died and I hadn't told her. So yeah. you kept it for you? Yeah, completely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, did you share it with anybody? Uh, no. No. I just, I do, I agree with Ezra. I think your brain is fascinating. I mean, you come up with an idea and then you can write story after story, and you said you chose to stop, but the ideas didn't stop. Do you still think about Harry Potter, what he would be doing, what the next thing might be? Well, I think I did scratch that itch with, yeah. um, with Cursed Child, the, mm -hmm. the stage production, which was, a, which was a great experience, because the character I was fascinated, was fascinated by was Albus, mm -hmm. uh, Harry's middle child, mm -hmm. and in fact, we went on, and I gave those ideas to Jack Thorne, and together we wrote this play. Do you think, because I know that the expectation for you must be, I think it's crushing. I mean, you did Harry Potter and everyone's like, well, what's this? How does mm -hmm. this compare? How does this? Is this, is this movie like that movie? I mean, how do you escape that, that heavy burden? Because that's a lot for someone to carry around. Do you know what? I, this may, lots of people won't believe me when I say this, but I genuinely don't think like that. I think I was, it was an incredible sort of lightning strike what happened with Potter, no pun intended. It's really hard to talk about Potter with that strange magic and, you know. Mary, she said you rose from the ashes. I know, I noticed, I noticed, and I didn't do the Phoenix, I know. So, but I think I, it was a privilege, it was extraordinary. I knew in 2000 it would never, nothing I wrote, I remember thinking in uh, the year 2000, nothing will ever come close to this. And you know what, that's fine. I write what I want to write, and I love everything I write. And in a sense, it's not a burden, really. It's freeing. Is I'm, it? Yeah, I'm free. I, I can write whatever I like. It's, uh, it's, that's bliss to me. Yeah. yeah. That when you did close the chapter on Harry Potter, a lot of fans obviously were distraught and, and you know, devastated. Yeah. But how was it for you? No, I was devastated. It was like a bereavement. I experienced a bereavement. It was really hard because those books had been my constant for 17 years. Um, and I'd been able to escape into them as well, and they'd seen me through some very difficult times. So, yeah, it was, it was huge. Mm -hmm. Right, working on this project, um, is it, does, it, does it kind of scratch the itch a little? Oh, you're, of course it does. it does. I'm back in the world. Yeah. And I'm dealing with my, some of my favorite characters. So it's, it's been a gorgeous experience. And yeah. do you take part in the casting at all? Were you involved in that part? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> like, I did not yes. love these people. I did I, not love them. Yes, you did. I was. I, in that, I have to say the you know, it's David Yates, is, sure. he's the director. Mm. But he has always been incredibly generous. He would show me audition tapes. And these girls were just, it was clear and obvious that they were, the, you know, there was no question in my mind these were the people we had to have. And then Ezra, 
uh, I didn't want at all. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, of course, he was just absolutely perfect. Yeah. And Dan, yeah. it was hard. We couldn't <laughs> find Jacob. And J for some reason, Jacob, who I think we'd all thought will be the easiest to cast, was really hard. Ah. And then we, uh, David Yates called me and said, I found him. And he sent me some stuff you've done. I said, and I said yeah, you, yeah, you found him, thank God. Yeah. So, we, so that was weird because we thought J Jacob would be the easiest one. Yeah. Good, Look at we, it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Seeing it, it's one thing to have your screen. <laughs> <laughs> Seeing things on paper and watching how they play out in front of you are two different things. Um, you often hear people who write either books or screenplays mm -hmm. and they go and watch it and they go, wait, I meant that or it didn't feel like that. How was that collaborative experience for you? I actually love it oh. because although I am I'm definitely a born novelist and I'm very comfortable with that quite solitary existence, it is fun to collaborate. Mm -hmm. It is. It's, it's a really nice change of pace. And movies do have this particular magic, yeah. you know, to walk onto one of Stuart Craig's sets, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. And I would, do you agree particularly on this movie? He, like, yeah, yeah. Paris oh, big time. Right? Paris is beautiful. Isn't yeah. it? Yeah. I mean, yeah. New, he made New York stunning but I think with Paris I actually feel we're on the next level oh really and yeah I'm the transfiguration teacher for right yeah. and when you meet Stuart Greg do you like oh okay <laughs> yeah real wizard, real wizard. that's so true yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. yeah also for I mean, actors in this day and age you know it it's like being in the golden age of Hollywood to have sets like this. You know, we never imagined we would ever be on sets that, you know, look like real streets as far as the eye can see. Wow. It's like Cleopatra or something. You know, these, the scale is that's so extraordinary true, isn't it? in it because we build we yeah. build it all. It's not all CGI. Wow, and that I know that. is relatively yeah. unusual now. Yeah. I've met other mm -hmm. actors who have, um, you know, seen what we do in these movies, but Potter, we, we built a ton of stuff. And it's that texture it's of authenticity, yeah. too, yeah. that does come So across. much integrative stuff, like the way we work with puppetry, and yeah. the way, like, yeah. the way that the, the yeah. real thing is valued, like what creates the, those that. moments. Yeah. And, yeah. and you, you pick up a book or a ledger, and if they're, if they're actually, like, filled out, it's not just a, a prop. A prop. A yeah, it's not a, a fake book. Wow. It's, that's my favorite department, the prop. Yeah. yeah, it's the, so, the I, papers, I always go and I just, yeah. the posters books. It's so unending. Oh, yeah. my God. You go inside a drawer of a desk that's never, never going to be, be open. Yeah. <laughs> and there's, there's a whole stack of yeah. paper, and you go that 75 pages character. in, and it's detailed stuff from the it's, world. It, you, no have no you have like, no idea. You have no idea. It's wild. The shops, wild. The the shops, shops in the shops Paris, you, walk, you can walk yeah. in. And is, these are just shops yeah. that, like, yeah. Jacob and Newt are walking yeah. past. Yeah. Yeah. But you can go in and they're all set up. It's like in the Willy Wonka. Yeah. 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 That's, wow, door. that's fat. Yeah. What, do your, uh, what do your kids think of your latest projects? They haven't, they haven't seen this movie yet yeah. because I, I like them to see it when we're done. Uh. Um, but, they, they, yeah, they really love it. Do they, they My son it? in particular is a, is a huge sort of nat How naturalist guy. He's 15 now. 15. So he was really interested in the beast designs. Do you have any writers in the family? What's happening in there? No. No, no one wants to write. They, they see what it's... They, they don't envy my life. Well, they see what? what? Well, they see me shut in a shed in the garden most of the time. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, they, yeah, yeah. they don't see this as a glamorous existence. You know? Do you do you write in total silence? Is that where you like to be when you write? Um, no, I like classical music in the background. Ah, I'm awesome. quite. I find uh, the human voice quite. I, do, there's a radio station in the UK, Radio 3, and you just mm. get all classical music, yeah. hardly any station. voices, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm. So yeah, I, I like to have that on. Can I say I like your red hair, not to be distracting, but wow, is this Thank new, you. or have, have I just missed the, or well, you don't take many pictures? I accidentally went really blonde. I didn't mean to go quite as blonde as I, and then I saw my photo of myself at the BAFTAs, and I thought, you look like Dolly Parton's <laughs> plainer sister. This is not good. It's time to go a bit more natural. So, so this is your natural? Is red it, your Well, natural? I'm not sure what color my hair is now underneath all the dye, but this is far closer to my natural color, yeah. Wow. Um, and if you were just to kind of tee up what fans can expect if, when they watch this, this movie coming up, how would, you, how would you sell it? Let's just go around. Ezra. Okay. Ezra, how would you sell it? I would say that, you know, if you're a fan, this is, we start to get so much deeper into the connections of the, the fabric that, 
that um, binds us to the stories we know and love from Harry Potter, but with these characters that we now know and love from Fantastic Beasts. Mm -hmm. And I would say it gets really deep and really dark really fast. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think that's Yeah, I think it's a good. rapid descent into, like, as serious as we've ever gotten in this series, I, I, I think. And I think for people true. who may be just coming upon it for the first time and say, oh, I didn't see the first one, but I want to see this one, will we be okay? Yeah. Yeah? I yeah. think so. It's yeah. like, uh, I, I, I always refer to uh, the Star Wars universe. I grew up in, I was born in 76, right? I was like, that's, that's my that's you, yeah. franchise. And um, my favorite movie is Empire Strikes Back. Mm -hmm. This is the Empire Strikes Back. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of people's favorite movie. Right. Right. So we can say that you wouldn't want to see the next one right. without seeing this right. one. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. That yeah. I think yeah. like yeah. it would I be think very difficult. Yeah. 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 Now, okay, we have you've got five of these you know? movies. Yeah. Is that yeah. right? Yeah. You're gonna have five of those coming, and you've shot two. And do you you already know what's happening all the way through the five? Pretty much. Yeah, I think fans uh, already know. I'm not saying anything, this isn't a big reveal, this story finishes in 1945 okay. and people who have read the Potter books will know what happens in 1945 and, and why that's where we're heading and in fact that's why we ended up doing five movies because we're spanning a 19 year period. So, so in addition to this, mm -hmm. you have other things in the hopper or other things in your head or yeah. what's, what's cooking? Well, I also write crime under the pseudonym Robert Galbraith, even though nearly everyone now knows that's me. But we decided to stick with Robert because I, it's just a convenient division yeah. to have the two. Um, so, yeah, I'm probably, my next novel will probably be the next in that series. How do you sleep? Like, are you always thinking of things? Is it exhausting being you? No, I don't know. Are you I don't know anything different, do I? I, I seem to rub along okay. It's, yeah, it's not. It's I'm not a tortured person. No. Not, well, not about my work anyway. That's my happy place. I always no. picture <laughs> you as, because I, again, I'm looking for interviews, and there are so few. Like, yeah. there's Charlie Rose, there's Oprah, there's, you know, so a, a few here and there. Most people, you pulled up and there are a gazillion. And I, I always, I, I wondered, I said, well, I wonder why Joe always likes to sort of stay in the background. Seems like you try to do that, right? Yeah. I think, um, I don't think it's necessarily helpful for a writer to be talking about themselves all the time. You know, I think, I feel as though you're giving away energy that's better spent on the page. Mm -hmm. Yeah. However, when it comes to politics, you kind of jump in a little. Yeah, I get mouthy. Yeah, you do. I was kind of surprised. I thought you were going to kind of, I, I was surprised when I first saw you and uh, the president, I guess, have a little online tussle. Joe How was that? Down. <laughs> that would be, tussle was a nice word. I've always been like that. I, yeah. This isn't a new thing for me. It's just that I, I don't know, maybe I feel right now, certainly not just in the U.S., the U.K. is going through a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. People need to stand up. Yeah. And they do say, um, for whom a lot is given, a lot is expected. There you I go. mean, you, yeah. you feel that way? Yeah, definitely. And I think, I think we all do, right? Mm -hmm. we've all, we're all pretty engaged with... Um, various causes, and yeah. yes, exactly right. You, you, if you're a privileged person, you should be giving back. That's just the deal. And just lastly, do you feel, I mean, when you talk about, you know, your, your life when you were in your 20s and your life today, do you feel like a totally different person, or do you just feel like the same person who happens to have a bigger, you know, bank account? I'm definitely the same person, but I'm a wiser person. Mm -hmm. I learned a lot, and I think that's the best you can say. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I think I do better. I make better choices now than I did in my 20s.